everybody, welcome back to my channel. Thank you for joining me for your yoga practice. And I just wanted to say to you, if you're new here and you're interested in accessible and yoga for everyone, please stay, please join me, please subscribe. And if you're coming back, I'm so grateful you're returning. You know I love you. Thank you, fam, for being here and supporting my work. We're giving everybody the opportunity to speak their voice. a little movement snack for the body. So this is something that I've been doing a lot of lately. A lot of us think if we're not dedicating 30, 75 minutes, 90 minutes, two hours to a yoga practice per day, that we're not doing enough yoga. I like to think of my yoga or my mindful movement practices, I like to think of them as little breaks in the day or little snacks for my body. So throughout the day, I try to get up and do 10 minutes of movement every couple of hours. I do a lot of sitting, so it's really important for me to get up and do a lot of movement. So let's start with a seated practice today. I'm gonna to grab my meditation cushion and just start with seated. I like to always start or often start in a seated twist. So let's go ahead and find a comfortable seat, whether you're sitting in a chair or sitting on the floor. If you're rocking an abundant body, I invite you to sit up on a meditation cushion, a bolster or a block to help support your low back. I don't know if you know this, but if you're in a plus size body, plus size bodies tend to be more flexible than non plus size bodies, just because our joints, ligaments and tendons have to accommodate that extra weight and they tend to have a little bit more give. So you might find you're more flexible than you think you are. So it's important to be kind, mindful and safe with your body. So make sure you're always engaging muscle energy. So try really hard to give yourself that internal hug by squeezing your belly that will help to support your back. Um, if you're sitting on the floor, make sure you're sitting up on a meditation cushion, a block, a blanket, something to give you that extra lift so that your low back has that little bit more of support. So let's go ahead and bring our hands to our knees and tuck our, our elbows into our rib cage. I'm just gonna keep an eye on the time here because it tends to get away from me. So curl your shoulder blades on your back and like, almost like draw the shoulders wide and apart so that your collarbones are lifted. Take a moment to breathe here. And now taking your left hand on the floor, let's swim the right arm up and over the ear, stretching out. Then let's inhale up, plant that left foot, take your right hand to your left knee, walk your left fingertips behind you, and take a little bit of a twist here. So we're looking over that left shoulder. Take a moment to breathe here. Now from here, you can slide your hands underneath that left thigh and extend the left leg out in front. If it's in your wheelhouse and feels comfortable to do so, you can also grab the foot and press the heel out in front of you, taking a little bit of a stretch here. Beautiful. Exhale and release. So I'm going to change the cross of my legs because my left leg was crossed in front before. So now my right leg is crossed in front. You can give that a try as well. Curl the shoulder blades onto the back, taking that left, left hand to the right knee, right fingertips behind you, work down through your sit bones, take a little bit of a stretch here just to stretch out the back. And let's do the second side. We're just taking a mid stretch snap here. Beautiful. Back through center, right hand comes to the mat, inhale, left arm up and over, turn the chest up to the sky, really stretch out through the fingertips, finding your body, finding your movement here. Beautiful. Inhale, come up. And now the reason I cross that right foot in front is because I want to plant it now. Swim that left arm toward the outer edge of the right knee, right fingertips behind us, root down through the sit bones and take that twist so that you're looking over your shoulder and just notice it. Notice what's happening here, pressing down through the sit bones. From here, let's twist back through center, slide our hands underneath our thigh, and then press the heel out in front. If it's uncomfortable and feels available to you, you also can try grabbing a hold of the foot and extending the leg out in front, pushing out through the heels. Inhale and exhale here. Just find your breath, find where this works for you, and know it doesn't matter if you can't do it all. 
right? It's not all or nothing, it's all or something. Go ahead and release. Bring the soles of the feet together. Take the knees out wide. I like to bring the outer edges of the feet together and the inner edges of the arches apart and lengthen forward. Moving with the collarbones forward, taking a moment to breathe, inhaling deeply, exhaling completely, and just noticing sensation. Now, if this feels like a lot, you can always grab a block, a blanket, maybe a bolster or some cushions to bring under your knees if you feel like, wow, that's a lot of sensation. You also can walk the heels away from the body to reduce some of that sensation in the legs. So let's go ahead and take a few moments to breathe here and just notice what that feels like in our bodies, right? It's really nice to take a moment to be in our bodies. Beautiful. One more breath. And on the inhale, come back up to seated. Bring your blocks off to the side so you have them at the ready, okay? So taking it off to the side, let's come back into our tabletop position. Taking our hands out nice and wide, you have the option here to come into cat counts, where you're softening the belly down on the inhale, lifting the sit bones, tucking the chin to the chest, and rounding on the exhale. First option. Another option is to lift up and back and come into your downward facing dog option. Spreading your fingertips out nice and wide. Let's go ahead and pedal the feet out here. So that is another option you can take. Third and final option, if you're looking for more sensation in the pose, is to take the feet out as wide as the mat, plant your left hand, and then take your right hand to grasp the other end, uh, edge of your shin, your ankle, or your hip, if you want to come up a little bit higher to, toward the thigh, bringing that right shoulder underneath the body. All right, so pick one of your three options here. First option being your cat-cow option, second option being your downward facing dog option, third option being your twist. Go ahead and do the second side when you're ready to switch over to the second side. So maybe left hand comes to the other edge of the right ankle, shin, or thigh, drawing that left shoulder underneath. And then when you're ready, you can release back into tabletop position and lower the knees down. Bring the big toes together, knees wide, and sit the bottom back toward the heels. Come up onto the fingerprints, lifting the palms, lifting the arm bones, and releasing that forehead toward the floor. Taking a few minutes to breathe here. Inhale deeply, exhale completely. Now on the next breath, let's roll up back into tabletop position and float the right arm out to the right, slowly taking the right arm underneath the left, bringing the head down to the floor onto a block or a pillow if that feels better. Option to relax here, opening between the shoulder blades. Another option is to root down through that right leg, press down through the right side of the body, and lift the left leg up. That's another option just to challenge the balance here. If you're looking for more of a hip opener, you can see if you can reach back and open the quad by grabbing onto the ankle. If you fall out, you're really close to the floor, so it's not a huge big deal, but do what works for you. Some days this works for me, other days it doesn't. You can even just bend the knee and open the hip a little bit if that feels better. Now releasing down to the floor and inhaling right arm up to the sky. Exhaling, planting that right hand. Let's do the second side. Left arm out to the left and slide the left arm underneath the right. Let the head come down toward the floor. Head can come to a block or a pillow. I sometimes like to take my meditation cushion and place it underneath my head, because that's like a really nice stretch for my low back. Option to play as well, if you like, in really pressing down into that left shoulder, pressing down into that right hand, and then lifting the right leg up if it works. Again, you can take a bind if it works for you. This is just an option. You don't have to do it. If it's not in your wheelhouse, then don't do it. Do what feels best in your body at all times. One more breath. And now exhale, release both knees back to the floor, plant into the right hand, lift the left arm up to the sky, and then make your way to seated. Again, you can set up on a block, bolster, meditation cushion if it feels comfortable to do so. And now stretch your arms, or stretch your legs, I should say, straight out in front of you. Take a manual inner spiral of your thigh, flex out through your toes, and on the inhale, let's walk our fingertips forward toward 
our toes or ankles. Now, pressing down through the back of the legs, pressing down through the sit bones, we're taking a forward fold. If you're able to grab your feet, that's great. Go ahead and do that if that feels comfortable, or bring your hands down towards the outer edges of your feet. You can also grab a hold of your ankles if you like, and press down through the sit bones. Pushing out through the inner edge of the feet, lengthening the collarbones forward, and feeling that stretch in the back body. It can feel really delicious. But just, point, just where it makes sense for you, listen to the sensations that your body is sending you. So it's sending you that biofeedback. If this is too much, then back up. There is no effort that's ever wasted in this pose, and there's no need to force past what's available to you. You don't get a prize. And if you end up injuring your body, then that's not, that, then there, your practice isn't going to be what you wanted it to be, right? You're gonna be sore. So let's be really kind to our bodies and not force if that's not what's available to us. Bend the knees now, walk your feet in, you can lift the head and the heart, come out of that forward fold before you make your way onto your back, and then come onto your back, tucking your shoulder blades underneath you, fingertips up to the sky, push down through the back of the head, and on the inhale, let's lift our hips to the sky, stretching out the front of our body, pushing down through the back of our head, and then exhale and lower down. Inhale again, lift up. Exhale and lower down. One more time. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, lower down. And let's go ahead and cross that left, pardon me, that right ankle over the left knee. If you do the left ankle over the right knee, it doesn't matter because we're going to do both sides anyway. So go ahead and take a moment to open up the back. Good. And release. Second side, cross it over, draw in, oof, good stuff. And release, bring the soles of the feet together, knees wide, arms up overhead. Ah, relax the body, relax the jaw, relax everything. And this is where you can take your final relaxation. So find where you can find a comfortable spot for you. So maybe a traditional savasana works in your body. It doesn't in mine, but it really hurts my back. So I like to bend my knees and bring my knees in toward each other and my hands onto my belly. You can either come to either side and relax, meaning you can lay on your right side or your left if that makes more sense. But find where this works for you and take a moment to breathe. All right, thank you so much for joining me today on your yoga journey. Uh, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Become part of the Yoga for Everyone, Yoga Where You Are family. And make sure you leave me a comment below. Let me know what kind of videos you'd like me to create. Thank you so very much for trusting me with your practice, and I'll see you next time.